Blizzard has been very open in their communication lately and even tried to give us ETA for upcoming bug fixes. But some players seem to be frustrated and are wondering why it takes so long for certain fixes to be rolled out. Let me try and explain why that is the case. Hey guys, I'm Dimsys from the Omnic Post. Over the holidays, something shifted over at Blizzard. The communication since the start of the new year has been different, open, transparent. And I mean, there's still a lot of room for improvement, but it is a very good start. I am really optimistic. Now with this new communication style and that transparency comes a new complaint. See, Blizzard has also been communicating on when they will be rolling out certain fixes. Map pools are being removed in Season 4. SRDK is being removed in Season 4. The Ash issue is going to be fixed, yeah, you guessed it, in Season 4. And when I post an update on these topics, I see those same comments coming up every single time. Nine weeks to remove two lines of code? Why do we have to wait so long for such a small issue? Why is my main still disabled? So I figured I'd make this video explaining why we have to wait that long and attempt to use it as a reply to all of those tweets. So if you're here due to one of those tweets, welcome. Alright, let me explain. For one, we as a community are rather impatient. But you know what? That shows our passion for the game. If we didn't like the game that much, we wouldn't care about these updates. But secondly, and most importantly, games are one of the most complex and difficult digital products that you can make. And especially on this scale, for several reasons. Let me start out with an obvious one. We as a community underestimate the amount of work it takes to do some of these fixes. I feel like some of you really think that it's just a matter of scaving down some pixels to fix that ash skin. It's not. It's way more complicated than that. There's way more files that need to be changed than checked. There's way more people involved in doing that small change than you think. Now if you're working on a small project at a small indie company, that can be done in a few days. It's possible. But if you're working on a huge project like Overwatch that has hundreds of people working on that same project, you need to organize. But let me try and explain it in a very simple way. Let's say that you and your friends decide that you want to write a story together. You meet up in a pub, you pick a setting, a rough plot line, and some characters that you all agree on. And all of you leave that kickoff meeting a little crooked, but you go home and you start writing. You plan to throw together all your work at the end. Well, let me tell you, that story is going to suck. It's going to be one huge pile of incoherent doo-doo. That's why you need to organize. Who is going to write which chapter? What is going to be the starting point of that chapter? What is going to be the end point of that chapter? Who is going to be joining the plotline within that chapter? Who is going to exit the plotline within your chapter? There's about a million of things that you need to agree on. And you know what? It would be even better if you were able to read the previous chapters before you started with your own, right? Well, it's the same thing with development, kind of. If you don't want to make an app, or in this case, a game, that breaks immediately as soon as you open it, if you even manage to open it, you need to organize. And organizing effectively is not easy. Not even in those smaller indie teams, let alone in a team with over 250 people. You need to be smart about it, diligent, strict. Luckily, there are people, aka producers, that have a particular set of skills to keep a team on track. And to do that, they use a wide range of tools, methods, systems. I mean, there are conferences, books, seminars about this topic specifically. Now, I don't want to go into deep on these systems, but let me maybe explain some basic elements. Just like you and your friends are writing that story chapter by chapter, game developers tend to build their game piece by piece. Now, what they consider a piece might not be necessarily what you think is a piece. And they generally don't do it in the order that we play it. But for this explanation, that doesn't matter. What matters is that they start out with making some type of roadmap, which maps out the content that they want to add, where they want to add it, and when they want to add it. In other words, in which update. Now, they will break up that content in chunks that contain tasks per role. And there are a lot of roles. There's concept artists, there's animators, sound designers, writers, designers. There are dozens of different roles that are involved with making a game like this. So the producers will look at the tasks and what kind of profile they need. They will look at the profiles that are available and what their schedule might be. And then they will assign these tasks to the people that are available within the role. And their common goal is to finish those tasks and to hit that milestone so they can release the update. It is a huge puzzle that requires a whole team of people to get it organized. And yeah, they leave some room in that schedule for bug fixing. But these bug fixes need to follow that same schedule, that same system. So when that Ashkin needs fixing, they need to look at a concept artist that needs to be available to change the design. They need an artist that can change the model. Maybe they need someone to make, for instance, a different shader. So after squeezing it in left and right, you get a result. And that result needs to be checked 
In the first instance, they do something that we call a peer review, which is basically a second or even a third pair of eyeballs that look at your work. They check if everything works according to the tasks and the standards that they have set as a company. When it's code, it could be a fellow programmer. When it's a model, it could be the art director. The thing is, all these people also have their tasks and their planning. So that peer review needs to be planned. See what I'm going with this? It's crazy. And we're not done yet. In the second instance, it needs to go to QA, quality assurance. These people have one job, and that is to try and break the work of their colleagues. Not because they're bad people, but first, they double check if you did your job, and second, they need to make sure that whatever you added doesn't break the project on a whole. And as we've noticed, some of those bugs manage to slip in. It happens. You can test all you want. The moment you push out your game to millions of users, yeah, there's going to be bugs popping up that you never expected to happen. In the case of Overwatch 2, it happened a little too much around launch. We all remember that, but that's a different story, a different video. But anyways, QA needs to check. Now, if there should be an issue, it needs to go back to development. And that loop kind of continues till it's done. But that loop also needs to adhere to the planning. Now, when everything is checked and everybody's happy, it gets added to a build. So basically, the package of fixes that will be rolled out in a future update. Now, rolling out that update, that's a different story. They recently managed to fix the hotfix tool, so they can do these matchmaking daily updates that they're doing right now pretty easily. But there are some restrictions. And Overwatch 2 is cross-platform. Now, back in the day, before Overwatch was cross-platform, it could happen that the console builds came a little later than the PC builds. It didn't happen that often, but it did happen. And it wasn't too bad. Well, it sucked, but it wasn't game-breaking. But now, since everybody from different platforms can play together, everybody needs to be on the same build. And you know what they say, a chain is just as strong as the weakest link. And in this case, that's console. Because all these console platforms have procedures that the developers need to follow. A build must be submitted, it must be checked, in some cases it needs to be changed. It can take a few days or even a few weeks till that whole process is done for all the platforms. But once the platform gives them an okay, well, things just start rolling out. But that whole story, everything I just told you in the last few minutes, it is why it takes so long. It is a huge process, a huge puzzle. It is the eternal battle of game development. And trust me, you don't want them to rush it. I think you would be more upset with the result of them rushing it than you would be with the bit of delay that we have for these fixes. Now, a final note, they always try to give us an ETA that they think they can hit. I mean, they don't like overpromising at all. Back in the day, they would just say, soon, and then we still would have to wait till season four, so. But anyways, I hope this clarifies it a little bit for you guys. I tried to stay away from the technical terms and go too deep into it because that doesn't help anybody. But yeah, the conclusion is that game development is hard. I speak from experience. But um, tell me, would you like to work in the gaming industry and what is the game that you would like to work on? Let me know in the comments. Join me during my streams on twitch.tv slash damesistv and make sure to subscribe for more updates on Overwatch.